My name is John Morgan. I'm the president and general manager of Kualoa Ranch. Kualoa Ranch is three Ahupua'a, or ancient land divisions. Uh, on the south is Hakipu'u Valley, about 1,700 acres, and uh, in the middle is Kualoa, and on the north is Ka'ava. So the whole ranch is just under 4,000 acres. Half of it is mountain, and the rest is uh, agriculture. Kualoa was uh, known in the ancient times as one of the most sacred places on the island. It was always owned by the ruling chief, and, uh, and, and there's all kinds of legends and, uh, and, and, and stories that kind of talk about how important it was to the Hawaiian people and to the sovereignty of Oahu. There's all kinds of great cultural resources here at Kualoa Ranch. Uh, the Moli'i Fish Pond is a 125-acre ancient Hawaiian fish pond. It's a loku, loko kuapa, or a fish pond, that was built by the Hawaiians making a wall out into the reef. It was a place that they could, uh, they could rely on, on a steady supply of fish, and an amazing uh, engineering feat, actually. Agriculture at Kualoa Ranch uh, and the lands of Kualoa goes way back. In fact, right in this valley right here, uh, Kaha'i, a renowned navigator who sailed back and forth from Tahiti, was said to have brought the first breadfruit. And actually, this is the second place on the island of Oahu where the breadfruit was planted. There's extensive uh, taro patches up in, the, uh, up in the valleys here. So agriculture goes way back, way back here. You know, we're really fortunate. Uh, you know, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Uh, the, the, the people that came before us were the ones that preserved this land. They were committed to the, the agriculture and to making it productive. We're lucky that we have so many great people that, that farm the land, and whether it's oysters, whether it's shrimp, whether it's fish, whether it's taro, uh, cattle, uh, we have some great, uh, great people taking care of the land and, and making it productive, and our goal is to hand it to the next generation of stewards that will be able to keep the land productive, keep it open, and have people be able to come and get educated and enjoy it. Aloha, my name is Ku Ipo, and I am in charge of the aquaculture operations at Kualoa Ranch. The aquaculture program at Kualoa Ranch encompasses 20-acre earthen ponds growing shrimp and tilapia and also the 125-acre Moli'i Loko'ia or Ancient Hawaiian Fish Pond in which we produce oysters and harvest fish. So we are actually pioneers in growing oysters in Ancient Hawaiian Fish Ponds. We began research and development about eight years ago of whether oysters would grow, how do they grow, and the best way to grow them in uh, Moli'i Fish Pond. And from that process, we have um, learned uh, the particular culture system that works best with us, which is floating round baskets. We've also been challenged uh, by Mother Nature with barnacles, with uh, parasites, and other types of organisms that have come to compete with the oysters in the pond, but she, given these challenges, we've learned to overcome them and find satisfaction in learning what we have about this process so that we can share with other fish ponds that may be interested in also growing oysters. So on our oyster side, we've um, grown exponentially every year. We've been in production for consumable oysters for about four and a half years now. We've doubled our production each year and presently we're producing about 10 to 12,000 oysters a month for restaurant markets and also for use in our for our weddings and also available for sale to the community in our visitor center. Our Hakipu'u aquaculture facility includes um, eight earthen ponds that have brackish water in them. This was made about 40, 41 years ago, originally called MRTC, or the Maritime Research Culture Center. And um, for the past 15 years, has been back into uh, Kualoa Ranch's hands, and we have continued to produce fish, uh, being tilapias, and also saltwater Pacific white shrimp. So we acquire our baby shrimp from Oceanic Institute. They're acquired at about, two to three millimeters. They're grown out in the pond in about eight months. They're of harvestable size. 
Every day their water quality readings are taken, their um, dissolved oxygen, their salinity and the amount of algae that's inside of the pond and then they're fed according to that and so they're fed twice a day. Probably the most important thing is we have oxygenation going on, aeration in the pond to keep us able to do, grow a lot of animals in a small area. For our shrimp production is about 2,000 pounds a month and you know with challenges of mother nature and the variables that she provides our productions in both oysters and shrimp goes up and down and, but we are learning to try to increase our efficiency and our effectiveness in being able to produce uh, as much as we can. The other thing that, that really touches me is when we're working in the land and working in the water, to feel the influence of the kupunas, those that came before us to help guide us in what we're doing and to give them pleasure as they look down that we're doing things in the right way. And when we're not, we trust that they will guide us and maybe give us a little sign, a blowing of the wind or a certain bird to tell us, oh, maybe rethink that. And with that, being honoring our predecessors is also to prepare things for our new generation and the children to come so that the opportunities of learning that we have can be shared with those that are to come. So the thing that warms my heart the most um, in doing this job is to provide a product to someone that just tickles their, their tongue and tastes so good as they're eating it and they, almost so that you can just feel the love that's been put into this product that, that it's been grown by us. My name is Isis Lipman and I'm the Diversified Agriculture Manager here at Kualoa. So we farm a variety of tropical fruits and we grow some vegetables. So some of the fruits we grow is ulu, breadfruit, uh, maya, banana, uh, we grow cacao, uh, we have dragon fruit, papaya, and soursop and a, a lot of variety of tropical fruits as well. So we'll go out um, on a daily to, to check the, the fertilization, making sure the trees are healthy, and then we will also check on the fruit uh, to see the stage of the fruit, where it's at, when it needs to be harvested. Uh, we'll be checking for insect diseases, uh, things that, that could be causing problems, and then ways to improve the, the health of the trees, uh, the soil health, and if there is any fertilization issues that we need to tend to on those on a daily basis. Certain crops we will uh, set up irrigation um, for them, things like the papaya and the vegetables, but some of the, the longer, the, the older tree crops, um, once they're established, they don't require uh, much as wet in fertilization or watering. Uh, it's more just caring for the pruning of the trees and we are mulching the trees, helping, helping with the soil health as well as the harvesting. Well, I've always, from when I was young, I've always had a direct connection with, with uh, nature and with plants. And um, I feel that we are, I truly believe we are what we eat. And so being connected to the, the aina and the land and, and the food of which we grow, um, you, you feel that, that connection, that power that comes from the food that, that feeds us. So we take care and help feed the, the trees and the food and the food in turn comes back and, and nourishes us. And so um, it's just, uh, it's a privilege just to, to daily be out in, in the beauty of nature and, and taking care of, of the aina in that way and keeping uh, the, the place green, you know? And more green space for us because we, we need more green space for us to grow the food for us to survive. 
and uh, we're always looking for more healthy food and more sustainable crops to grow that can help in turn fuel generations uh, of people to survive. My name is Taylor Kellerman. I'm the Director of Diversified Agriculture and Land Stewardship for Kulo Ranch. Being responsible for all of the acres that run basically from the mountains to the ocean, it's a really great relationship between our conservation groups and our agriculture groups. Because in agriculture, we're doing those food production things that really sustain our community. But at the same time, because we're also doing all of the stewardship and conservation work in the mountaintops, above, below, as well as the waterways, it's kind of like we're our own neighbor. So it's really important to us to not only use the natural resources we have, but to preserve them as well. Uh, so Kulo Ranch began ranching cattle in the mid uh, 1800s, and that was its primary business up all the way up until about 1980. Uh, we were uh, number 33 in the ranch list of uh, Oahu ranches, and that is actually still our brand today, is the number 33 because of that. We have uh, 600 head of cattle that are all grass-fed, grass-finished, with no added hormones or steroids. We also have a large Korean natural farming piggery which we are able to raise pigs in a sustainable environment as well with no scent. And we also run a herd of oh, about 120 horses as well. We're one of the only ranches on the island of Oahu today producing grass-fed, grass-finished beef. Uh, on a regular basis. Uh, it's something that we're very proud of and it helps us maintain the land, uh, maintain the agriculture on the land, and we do it in a very sustainable manner so it makes for a better product and it's uh, a great environmental impact for uh, the property as a whole. Uh, we also uh, raise free-range eggs in our, uh, one of our agricultural locations as part of our overall management plan. You know, when you look at the people that help us with all of our ranching and uh, the Kulo employees that are our Paniolo and those that deal with the cattle and, and, and work this land with us, you know, you can tell that they know deep down inside they're carrying on a tradition that has been around for close to 150 years. Uh, it's something that we see as our responsibility. It's something that we see as our uh, giving back to the land and it's something that I think we will continue to do so because it is such a terrific way to not only share what we do with people, but also uh, it's our way of being able to pass along these techniques and environmental standards to future generations and perpetuate the kuleana or responsibility that we have to this land. Uh, you know, one of the things that we've really tried to concentrate our efforts on, uh, agriculturally speaking, as well as environmentally, is uh, growing, promoting, and outplanting a lot of uh, native species. Uh, things such as uh, koa trees, we're being uh, reforestation projects in the back of Kava and Hakipu valleys. Uh, you know, this is the, the home of the Hokulea, so it's very fitting that we're using this native Hawaiian hardwood as part of our program. Also, uh, Ulu, you know, this is one of the first areas that Legend has it, Ulu was brought to this island and um, it's found a resurgence on our plates and in our restaurants and we're helping to kind of promote that use of that traditional crop as well. Uh, most recently we've opened back up a 23 terrace lo'i that has not been farmed in over half a century and as far as we can tell has been there for many, many centuries. So taking those crops that were always here, taking those crops that you know, sustain the peoples before us but giving it kind of a new flair is really what makes me excited about what we do.
I have dedicated my whole life to agriculture and uh, working with the environment and, and, and creating natural environments for not only today but the future. You know, growing up in Kailua my entire life, everybody knows about Kulo Ranch, everybody passes by Kulo Ranch, but it wasn't until I started working here that I realized how special this place is. Think about how many places you know whose sole purpose is to perpetuate open space and undeveloped area. And when I got an opportunity to come here and be a part of that, it was an absolute no-brainer because my job daily, every day, is to make sure that this land is utilized properly, that it's going to be here for my kids and their kids, and that it stays the way it has been for as long as we can remember. You know, the entire reason I have dedicated my life and my career to producing good food for people is because of that feeling that I get inside when I see somebody that's able to nourish themselves and enjoy food that I produce, whether it be the cattle, whether it be the pork, whether it be the vegetables or even the shrimp or oysters. When they put a smile on their face and when I know that their bellies are full from something and work that I did, there's no feeling like it in the world. We are a family. We all share the common goal and that, that common goal is to perpetuate the land to enhance its beauty and to produce food and to really make us a contributing member to this community and to carry on a tradition uh, that has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's an honor and a privilege and I think we all feel that way and it's the, the glue that binds us together. Thank you.